This is the Painter's Podcast. I'm Gary Francis. Today we're talking to Kevin Hill, who is an artist based out of California. Kevin is in his early 20s, has only been painting for about five years. He has over 200 YouTube instructional videos. He has almost a dozen and a half DVD instructional videos. He's had workshops in New England. He's had workshops in California for the past two years teaching hundreds of people how to paint. And uh, his work is just stunning. He has come out with his own line of brushes. He is sponsoring his own line of paint. Kevin, welcome to the Painters Podcast. Hey, thank you. It's great to be here. A lot of people would like to know, how long have you been painting? Well, I've been painting now for about five years. I started when I was 15. Have you had any kind of formal training, or are you strictly self-taught? Well, I've had a little bit of formal training, but I'm mostly self-taught. I really like learning by experience, so I would just do a painting and slowly get better. Of course, there's always things you want to work on. In fact, I'm still working on things today. I'm always, always trying to figure out new things and working on things that I know I can improve. And it just works. You, you paint, and the more you paint, the better each painting gets. And it's, it really is amazing. So it's just practice. Practice all the time. Where do your painting ideas come from? Well, that's something that's really fun for me to talk about. I, I really enjoy taking several photos and combining them into one scene. An example of this is, you know, you, you go out for a day and you take a hundred pictures, whatever it is. And, and you say, okay, now I like that mountain. I like this tree. I like this flower. I like that river. And I'll, I'll take the tree out and I'll take the mountain out and, and I'll put them all together in one scene. Now, I personally like to do this on the computer because it's just easier for me. Uh, you could do this with a pen and paper. You could sit down with your photos and sketch them up on paper instead and you could still get the general concept and idea. And, but it's always very important to work from a reference photo. But just with, let's say, three or four photos, you could make 30 or 40 different paintings and they would all be totally different and unique. So that's really where I get almost all of my ideas. Now, of course, a few of them are from, from nature, from what I've actually seen, but most of them are places that actually don't exist except for I just I made them up. It's really cool. When you started to paint, Kevin, did you struggle with anything and how did you overcome that struggle? Yeah, of course, like everybody does. I mean, when I first started, you know, my first painting literally dripped off the canvas. <laughs> I put way too much oil down, and, and the next morning it was, it was like it rained. So anyway, we learn from our mistakes. Do you paint every day? Well, no, unfortunately I don't. In fact, I paint twice a week, maybe. Sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends on what I'm doing. But it's super fun, and I'm glad I get to do it as much as I do because I really enjoy it. Is painting always just for work, or do you ever just paint for fun? Well, that's actually a very, that's a very interesting question, because I just recently bought a couple of travel easels. I'm going to do a little painting for fun, probably outside. I don't get a lot of opportunity to paint for fun, just because I'm so busy doing all the, uh, the things for filming and everything. I do occasionally paint for fun. And another thing that's fun is occasionally I do uh, a larger commissioned work or something for a gallery. And I just take my time on those. I paint maybe two hours, one hour, two hours a day for three, four days of a week. That's a lot of fun for me. So yeah, it's, it's sort of for work, but it's also a lot of fun. Is there any difference between when you're painting for work and painting for fun? Well, a few differences when I paint with fun. Maybe the biggest difference is I, I go a little slower and I don't usually finish in one day. I usually take a little more time, sort of think about the painting and refine it even more. And then I usually walk away from it, come back a couple days later, do a couple more details, you know, that sort of thing. Just very relaxed, not really worried about it. It gets done whenever it gets done or not. It just doesn't matter. So that's, that's kind of the, the big difference. But the painting's really the same. Will you be coming out with any still life or flower instructional lessons? Yeah, actually, we are planning to do a flower DVD here in the near future. I really enjoy flowers. I don't do a whole lot of them, but I think it'd be fun to kind of share the, the process that I use to create the flowers. Because everybody has a, a slightly different way to create flowers. I really enjoy sketching them in first and all that, so I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be doing one of those pretty soon. Will we ever see you doing portraits of people or animals? Well, I've done a few animals in the past, not a lot, and usually they're very tiny inside a landscape, things like that. But boy, portraits, I haven't practiced them, so it would take me a little while to learn it. I would learn it first, become confident with it, and then you might see it. So we'll see. Now let's move over to uh, some of the more uh, 
mechanical questions about how you paint. For example, are all your paintings the same size that we see on your videos? Well, most of my paintings, especially on the videos, are 18 by 24 inch canvas. It just really works out well, especially for the camera. It's a good size. And I usually film horizontal because I just, I feel it films a little better. And so that's normally what I do. Now, recently I did one on a square 18 by 18 canvas, and that was a lot of fun. That was my, one of my first square paintings. And, and I really enjoyed that. That was, it turned out, it turned out very different. It just had a different look to it, which I thought was neat. I paint on some really small stuff occasionally, especially when I paint for fun or on the road or whatever. I usually work on some tiny stuff. And then that birch panel you get with the paint set, I think I did a video on that. That size was really good for a quick painting because you have success and you don't have to spend all day covering the canvas. So, but for the most part, for me, 18 by 24 works out really well. Do you use any special brushes or tools? Well, actually I use my own brush line that we had custom made and they're available on the website. So if, you, if you're interested in getting some of the same brushes and tools that I use, you can go there and check it out. It's really important for me to know that you guys can use the same stuff that I use. So we're all on the same page and we can all have success. You know, we're not fighting the equipment. If we have the wrong brushes, it, it's a lot harder. Having the proper tools is, is very important. Having the proper paints important as well. It's just, it's all a matter of sort of setting you up for success because the only thing I want you to have to focus on is the art, not so much the tools. How do you go about preparing the canvas before you actually start to paint on it? Well, that's a great question because I've had I've had several different ways I've done it in the past. The way I find is the absolute easiest is to coat only the top area, the sky area, with a medium mixed out of clear gel and titanium white. About a 50-50 mix is okay. You can use just gel, that's okay too. Depends on what, what you're doing. But I find that, that works really well because if you put medium over the entire canvas and you go to paint a dark tree, well, you're just painting, you're painting dark over white, over thin paint, it doesn't work as well because you end up just fighting the oil underneath and then you go to highlight and then you have to thin the paint to highlight and it becomes kind of muddy. So obviously that works and that's fine, but I prefer to go without medium on the bottom of the canvas. Do you have a preference as to what kind of paint you use? Well, paint's actually very important. I like the Gamblin 1980 series and we have a set of that on the website so you can use the exact same colors that I use. It's the oil paint's important because the right pigment and the right consistency helps so much. Sure, you, you can do the paintings in whatever paint me or different medium that you choose. I, again, I just want people to be on the same page that I am, all working together with using the same stuff. And I find these paints to work out really well. They're, they're pretty, I almost want to say sticky. You, they don't slip around too much. There's not too much oil in them. So that helps a lot. It helps to grab the canvas, but they're highly pigmented just enough that you can use a very small dusting of paint and coat the canvas and it's all about limiting the amount of paint on the canvas because too much texture, especially in the underpainting, is not good. It makes it very muddy. Do you mix any extra oil or mediums into your paints to make them flow better? Well, as I touched on before, the only time I like medium down on the canvas is in the sky. And it's a very small amount. It doesn't take much. So I do put a little bit in the sky. Otherwise, I don't. In fact, I always say if you're, if you're having trouble making the paint come off when you're highlighting, either wipe down the area with a paper towel and get rid of some of the, the extra paint you have on the canvas that's not helping you. Or you can simply load more on the brush. So those are your two options because that way you're controlling the paint on the canvas. You don't get you don't get muddy, it doesn't get slippery, and you're in better control the whole time. And of course to, to use the liner brush you do need to thin it with a little bit of oil, but that's that's about the only time you wanna you wanna go very slippery. Otherwise it just it can become a muddy mess and you don't want that. How do you clean your brushes? Well, I've used several methods in the past. The one I like the best is baby oil because it's, it's certainly safer than your solvents, the traditional solvents, and it's not as effective. It's a lot harder. It takes a lot more paper towels, but it's safer, and I think it's totally worth it. So I just scrub them in the baby oil. I wash or I dry them really, really well. Lots of paper towels, and, and then I think I lay them flat on the paper towels to let some of that oil come out of the brush for a little while before you store them. How should a beginner promote themselves and their work? Well, maybe one of the most effective ways for somebody to promote their art when they're just getting started will be to show in really tiny galleries or 
gift shops or whatever in their in their town. That always it's just it's easy. They're usually more than happy to have local artists. If you walk into your local you know craft shop or your gift shop or your local little gallery, they say, "Look, I'm a local artist, and this is what I do here." You know, have some have some paintings from you know local landmarks because wow, landmarks can sell. People love them. And and if they, if you've got some national parks around where you live or, or, you know, scenic destinations like that, take advantage of it. Do stuff that people know. You know, there's, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Mountains that everybody knows. You know, rivers, waterfalls, whatever it is. And, and those are very recognizable, so that will help. And also, you know, just general social media posts are always good. Just say, hey, look, hey, look um, I'm at this gallery and go check out my work. You know, something as simple as that, and it really does help. And then people share it, and people like it, and it, it, you'd be surprised. It goes, it goes everywhere, and it's great. That's a good way to start. And and just watch out for for open doors, and things are going to happen. And always make sure to look for opportunities to improve your art and learn, because as your art grows, people will notice even more. So that's really important. And a question from one of your viewers, kind of to wind things up. Why do you always wear a blue shirt in all your videos and classes? Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, there is a little bit of a story behind that, I guess. I needed, uh, I just needed a plain shirt for something, so I, I ended up buying just a random blue shirt. There was absolutely nothing special about it. And I just bought it. I needed it. I used it. And then whenever I decided to film YouTube videos, I needed, it again, a plain shirt with no text on it or whatever. So I grabbed the blue shirt, the only plain shirt I had, and I started filming. And I always just picked up the blue shirt. Well, you know, pretty soon I had to just go buy more of them and I just kept them going. Well then a little while later I figured out it's a good color to film with because it's not distracting. And of course it that doesn't distract. You know, I couldn't have anything that's too bright because then you couldn't see my painting. You'd just be seeing me. So it actually worked out pretty well. Well, Kevin, I want to thank you for joining us today here on the Painters Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Also, I want to thank everybody for sending in their questions because that really helped us on this interview. I really appreciate it. For more information on uh, Kevin Hill's work, you can go to YouTube and look up Kevin Hill Oil Painting. Or, even easier, go to his website, paintwithkevin.com. For the Painters Podcast, I'm Gary Francis.